Hello and welcome back. Today we're diving into the world of UML activity diagrams. Ever tried to map out the flow of activities in your application? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna do today using Star UML and our trusty fitness app as an example. If you're new to activity diagrams or Star UML, don't worry. I'll walk you through every step. By the end of this video, you'll learn how to draw activity diagrams and you'll understand exactly how they fit into your app development process. By the way, if you are enjoying my tutorial, don't forget to hit that like button, it really helps the channel. Thank you. In my earlier tutorials, you could follow along with the creation of UML class and use case diagrams. If you haven't seen those tutorials, I link them here and you can also find the links in the description below. Class diagrams are great ways to describe the static structure of a system, while use case diagrams can visualize the interactions within your app in a straightforward way. Now, to visualize the flow of actions in a system, you will likely choose activity diagrams. An activity diagram is like a map of different activities and the paths between them. Ok, open up Star UML. We'll create the activity diagram to describe the actions and the flows in our fitness app. Go to the model menu, select add diagram and then choose activity diagram. Notice how the toolbox changes to show elements specific to activity diagrams. In an activity diagram, each action in the system is represented by a rounded rectangle, also known as an activity node. We'll start with an initial node, which represents the beginning of our activity diagram. Next, we'll add our first activity. Open app. Actions are usually described using a verb in the active form. Do this, do that. Again, we should strive for simplicity in our diagrams. I can't stress that enough. Software systems tend to get complex as they grow, so it really makes sense to try and balance things off by aiming for simplicity when creating our UML diagrams. Now, let's add an arrow representing the control flow from the initial node to the open app action. After opening the app, the user might see a login screen. Drag another activity node and label it Authenticate User. Then, draw an arrow from Open App to Authenticate User to show the flow. Simple, right? Next, the user might decide to track a workout. So, let's add Track Workout. The app might allow users to do multiple things at once, like listening to music while tracking a workout. So, let's add the Play Music action. And we'll use a fork to represent that the two actions track workout and play music happen in parallel. A fork has one incoming flow, in our case from the authenticate user node, and two or more outgoing flows. So that's how we describe two or more actions that occur at the same time. In this case, the order in which these actions get executed is not relevant. You could start tracking a workout before hitting play in your favorite music app or the other way around. What the fork tells us is that tracking a workout and listening to music can happen in parallel. We'll add a join node to synchronize the completion of our parallel actions. A join has several incoming and one outgoing flow. The outgoing flow is only taken if all incoming flows have reached the join node. Thus, when the flow reaches this join node, it indicates that the user has completed both actions, finishing the workout and stopping the playlist. Next, we'll talk about how to express conditional logic in activity diagrams. But first, I'd like to ask you to check out my UML and Object-Oriented Design Foundations course. You won't just learn how to work efficiently with UML diagrams, but you'll also become familiar with the fundamentals of object-oriented design and analysis. And here's a special offer for my YouTube viewers. Use the code LEARNWITHCARL at checkout to receive a friendly discount. You'll find the link in the video's description below. Don't miss out on this opportunity to boost your skills. Plus, this way you will support my work and motivate me to create more free content. Ok, now back to our tutorial. Now, let's talk about decision points. 
For example, if you are a new user, you must register before logging in. So, after opening the app, you will have the option to choose if you are a new user. This is a decision point, represented by a diamond shape. A decision has a single incoming flow and several outbound flows. Let's redirect the control flow from the open app action to this decision. So this is the one and only incoming flow. Let's add the register action. And I'll add an outbound flow from the decision to this new action. Regarding the outbound flows, each of them has a guard in the form of a boolean condition that tells if the flow should be used. The condition in this case is new user. The boolean conditions are placed within square brackets, and they should be mutually exclusive. In other words, only one condition can be true at a time, guiding the flow along a specific path. We can use the else guard to represent an alternative path that is taken when none of the specified boolean conditions are met. This acts as a default route, ensuring that the diagram accounts for all possible outcomes and maintains a continuous flow of activity. In this specific scenario, else means that the user has registered previously and can log into the app. Let's add a control flow from the decision node directly to the authenticate user action. This is just a temporary solution, we'll change it in a moment. Now, both newly and previously registered users can proceed to the login step. We could represent that by adding a control flow from register to authenticate user. However, drawing multiple inbound or outbound flows to an action node can lead to confusion. Instead, we'll use a merge node. A merge node clearly indicates the end of the conditional behavior. Just like the decision node, it is represented as a hollow diamond, but it has multiple incoming and a single outbound flow. We'll detach the else path and attach it to the merge node. Then we'll draw a control flow arrow from the register action to the same merge node. Now we can draw the output flow from the merge node to the authenticate user action. We're almost done. Now, it's always a good idea to tidy up our diagrams before exporting and using them in a presentation or a design document. These final adjustments can make a huge difference when it comes to the professional look and feel of your work. You can try using the auto layout feature found in the format layout menu. Typically, I opt for the manual approach when it comes to aligning elements. And here's why. This is the automatic layout. Okay, let's roll it back. So let's use the alignment tools from the editors panel. I'll move these elements a bit closer to each other. Then I'll select the vertical diagram nodes by using shift and left clicking on them. then select Align Center and space equally vertically. Finally, I'll adjust these nodes, align them horizontally. And we're done. And that's how you create an activity diagram in Star UML. These diagrams are incredibly useful for understanding and communicating the dynamic aspects of systems like our fitness app. My upcoming tutorial deals with the sequence diagram, one of the most versatile and expressive tools in the UML toolkit. The sequence diagram excels in capturing the behavior of a system, detailing how objects and components interact over time. Make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon to stay updated. Until next time, keep coding and keep designing smarter. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.